Hello and welcome to episode 6 of the Comic Book Showcase. My name is Jamie Harm, founder of the Marvel and DC Databases, and I'm joined, as always, by the irrepressible Rab, the wonderful Mike, and the very knowledgeable Alana. And we're going to talk today a little bit about good guys gone bad and the vice versa, bad guys gone good. And we're going to start by talking about a very recent reference in uh, the cinematic universe, which is uh, something that surprised a few people, the Winter Soldier. Um, we, you know, in the, in the movie, he was... Um, referenced as being Bucky in the past, but Bucky no more, and how uh, he was really the villain of the movie, but we all know what, uh, at least in the comic book universe, how that changes and, and, and some of the reasons behind that. So just uh, without any further ado, I'm going to jump right in and ask, um, what, um, what sort of impact does this sort of character uh, morality, sense of uh, stable uh, morality change have on the character? their friends and family, and then on us as, a, as an audience. Uh, Rob, why don't you tell us uh, what you think about that? Well, it makes me think of Hal Jordan specifically, because he's a really big case where a good guy went bad, and that happened in the Emerald Twilight storyline when he tried to remake Coast City with his ring, and the Guardians were like, you can't do that. So he became very angry with them and decided that he would murder all of them. And in the process of murdering all of them, he drew the ire of a great deal of people. And the upshot of that and Zero Hour, with best buddy Green Arrow had to shoot him to death with an arrow, um, and he died. In terms of the character, it sort of made Hal Jordan dissipate, and it really... It, it revived his book to some extent because we got a new Green Lantern in Kyle Rayner and uh, that went very well. In my opinion, I was a big fan of Kyle Rayner. And, um, then, but Hal Jordan himself, until much later, was dead as a character. And so, did, just out of curiosity, did it change your opinion of the character uh, for the history before he went bad? Like, you, you obviously had formed an opinion on him in the years prior. Did, did that in any way change the way you feel about his actions prior? Well, it was kind of weird. I mean, I, I wasn't a huge fan of Hal before. I mean, I, I knew about Hal Jordan and I was reading him, but I felt like his book was kind of dull and all of the interest was in the, the Green Lantern core. His death sort of was, or his death and his going bad was sort of, it draws you back to the character to some extent because you're like, this is kind of dull, but oh, now he's bad. This is exciting. Some, his dr drama, drama's happening. And so in the end, you would say that he had to die as a penance for his sins kind of thing? I wouldn't be so cruel as to say that, but I, I think that's how I think that's how they felt, uh, uh, DC, or at least that's how the characters felt it. It was necessary for Hal to die after the events of Zero Hour, which were much pretty awful as well in comparison to just murdering all of the Green Lanterns. So, from a Marvel perspective, Atlanta, obviously one of the big examples, uh, Jean Grey and the whole Dark Phoenix saga. Uh, what? How do you like? Did that differ in any way, or what were sort of the repercussions and sort of the the impact on the characters and the audience there? What do you think? Well, it's a similar situation, although much earlier to what happened to Hal Jordan, um, where uh, Jean Grey, one of the staple main characters of the Marvel universe, uh, in the early '80s, um, went bad, got a whole bunch of power, could you know do a whole bunch of stuff she couldn't do before. Uh, and part of going bad meant killing a whole bunch of people, uh, blowing up uh, inhabited planets in her case. And uh, the way that the story was going to be resolved, uh, based on what was written, uh, was that she was going to get depowered um, and stay that way for a, a long time as, a, as sort of her penance. She didn't get to have powers and be an X-Man anymore. Um, but the editorial staff at Marvel at the time thought that uh, that was not enough and that the character had to die as penance uh, for killing all those people. The, the idea that she can't be a hero and she can't just walk away uh, with as little consequence as not having powers anymore. 
But I'm curious, though, if the editorial staff actually had maybe some inkling of that uh, that eventual plan in their mind from the beginning. I mean, obviously, it was. Uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong. If it was actually named the Phoenix Saga from the beginning, and so you know the the main concept of the Phoenix is rising from the ashes, from death, and to rise again. So I wonder if uh, there was some plan to do that, either with her powers or with her altogether somewhat from the beginning. Well, that's probably what the writer had intended, that, uh, you know, after being depowered for a long time and everything, she would, you know, rise uh, from everything that had happened. But uh, from what I've read, and this was years ago um, that I read this, and I think it was the Untold Story of uh, the Phoenix, or a book, something like that. It was released, I think, in the mid-late 90s, maybe? Um, that the, it, it came as a the, the the editorial staff did not know how the story was going to end until a couple of months before the issue was was going out, and uh, everything was already written or everything was already drawn or mostly drawn for the issue before um, it was a whoa, whoa 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 no that's not how it can end. Wow, that that's actually quite interesting. Um, okay, so um, in general, do we feel that these sorts of uh, Black white on off switch uh, switches in in the characters. Um, do we sense that that's more of a uh, character derailment, like just taking the initial intent of a character and throwing it off the tracks, or is it uh, potentially a, a natural progression that that is actually a valid storytelling point, or is there some uh, mid ground to be had? Uh, anyone want to chime in on that? Well, I think it's a natural character progression that. Uh, a Eventually, okay. should be told by a lot of people. Um, like, we're all inherently both good and evil, and it's, I mean, it can go either way, especially when you're dealing with people who wield such power. They're eventually going to either snap or figure out that, you know, one way of doing things isn't necessarily the way it's going to work, and it has to be done another way. And I guess that's kind of the case in Hal Jordan where he had the idea of what he thought was the correct way of doing things. The Guardians clearly thought, no, you're doing it the wrong way, and there was a conflict that arose and thus drove him into being evil. Um, it's like, I guess a good example is the Crime Crime Syndicate from uh, the Alternate yeah. Earths in the DC Universe, where it shows um, a lot of the same heroes in a negative light and they're all criminals instead of being superheroes so it kind of shows how cho choosing to take things in a different direction um, in that same like kind of similar character power set um, it's you know it could be so easily done it's just a natural progression that's a good point. Um, Rab, actually, you and I were talking a bit earlier about uh, you had some thoughts. I think I think Atlanta just mentioned it, Cassandra Kane. You thought that that was actually a bit of a derailment in that case as opposed to a character progression. Is that is that what you were trying to get at earlier? Well, I think it's like you said in a statement previously made a few seconds ago uh, that it's it can be a derailment or it can be a natural progression. It's not one or the other. I mean, it is one or the other, but it's not... This whole concept is not one or the other. I think Cassandra Kane's conversion from good to bad was a derailment. I think, like you said earlier, it can be an instance of a, a derailment or a natural progression, and in her case, I think it was not a natural progression. I think it depends on the writer and the, the mechanism the writer uses to make that switch, like the heel face turn. You have to have, or the face heel turn, I guess, in this case. You have to have a good reason, and I think in her case it was a not a great reason. I'm not even, I can't even really remember what the reason was. It was something to do with her father dying or something like that. This is a... I'm a bad rememberer, but the point was that the experience of reading the character sort of makes you turn against her because you don't believe the way that she's changed. Like, you could get behind a character who has gone bad or good if they've, if they've done it for the right reasons in your mind, but if it feels forced in some way, you, you turn against them, and you turn against the writer, and you turn against the company, and you get mad. 
Well, I mean, some are almost like scapegoats in that they are turned to a bad character, yeah. and it's like sometimes just plot driven. Um, I like sometimes I'm conflicted about the way that uh, Maxwell Lord was kind of um, like. I never really saw him as a good guy, but I never really saw him as the bad guy that needed to be killed by Wonder Woman in the way that he was. So it's like, where did that, like, was that a natural progression? Was so you, that... you actually bring up a really good point, and, and I think it, just to sort of take a slight tangent on that is the, the concept of choice versus no choice. So in the, the examples of Dark Phoenix, where she was somewhat possessed by, a, you know, otherworldly power... Uh, Archangel, uh, the original instance where he kind of flipped from good to bad, uh, again, uh, under the influence of Apocalypse, etc., etc. Um, so do we have much feeling in terms of, how, if, are you more willing to forgive a character if they're obviously brainwashed into turning bad to good? And, and how does that impact the consequences? Like, if they go from bad to good under the influence, we'll call it, um, are they then free of any consequence or ramifications to their character when they're not brainwashed anymore? Is everyone just like, oh, so, no worries, you were brainwashed, it's cool. Well, I guess it kind of depends on, like, the actions that they took while they were uh, under the influence. In Archangel's case, there's a lot of people that kind of held a grudge against what he did, like, inside the comic books. Um, but readers kind of, I guess, would sympathize with him because, you know, there was a lot of stuff that happened to him during that time, and you know, like, what What are you supposed to feel? Like, what is the writer making you feel about these characters? Um, some cases it can be really cool and interesting, such as um, let's, Flashpoint, for example. You had Aquaman and Wonder Woman in not necessarily bad characters, but it was they were being who they are, uh, like the king of the seas and, like, queen of the Amazons, defending chunks of land or claiming sections of the world for themselves in a dictatorship type style fighting amongst themselves in the fashion that like works for their power sets and works for their like their people in a way that's not mainstream for the regular universe and that played out really well and you didn't really feel those sympathies towards them because they were being like such I don't know evil versions of themselves. Bad. Uh, check out the full version, the full extended version of our uh, podcast this week on our website. As always, marvel.wikia.com and dc.wikia.com and check out uh, our Facebook and Twitter uh, pages as well.